Welcome back! So I did a uh, Pearl introduction video, that's the video you're looking at right now, and I was really fast and got you right into it, and we created our first little script, real simple, super, super easy, but in this video, I'm going to go a little bit slower. So this is a Pearl tutorial for someone who's never written Pearl before, and you want to kind of explore what it's like writing a Pearl script, I'll walk you through the process. You want to have a Pearl interpreter installed on your machine already to actually go along with me, and you do want to follow along. Don't just watch this video or listen to this video. Actually, go ahead and write the script with me. All right, let's have some fun. So let's go ahead and stop this video, and uh, let's get over to our terminal. Let's close this window first, actually. That would be nice. And here we go. So what we're going to do now, let's go ahead and clear up all this mess. Got all the stuff on my screen. All right, so we're going to create a Perl script. And the way we're going to do it, we're actually going to use a editor called VIM. So VIM is a nice text editor that I like to use. You can use Emacs, or you can use uh, like a te text editor like Notepad if you want. Doesn't matter. Whatever floats your boat, man. All right, so let's go ahead and create our script. So the first script we're going to create is let's go ahead and let's go. So let's go vim type vim space and let's type my first script dot pl and hit enter. Boom! Here we go. Let's clean this up. I already had the script created. I'll delete that. All right. So first line. We're going to go ahead and start by hitting the i key to enter the insert mode, and that's how you do it in vim. Then we're going to hit the uh, hash bang, hash bang, that's the number sign or hashtag and then the exclamation mark and then you put a forward slash user and I'll tell you what we're doing in a second. I'll tell you why we're doing this in a second. So what we're doing here is we are locating where the Perl interpreter is on this particular machine. So on this is a Unix terminal using the Ubuntu, Ubuntu. And um, that's the location where Perl interpreter is. So the system knows where to find the interpreter because this is not a compiled language. Perl is an interpreter or interpreted language. So therefore, it doesn't compile before it can run. You can run it right away. I can actually, this doesn't do anything, but if I hit escape and I go colon and I go WQ, I can actually run that script by typing Perl. And I can type in my first script.pl, and there it is. I just ran it. Doesn't do anything because we didn't give it anything to do yet, but bottom line is I don't need to compile it. I just type in my text, and I can run it right away. Let's go back into insert mode. Let's go to the end here. Hit enter. And now this is where the magic happens. So we want to actually have this do something. So let's have it print. Real simple, real basic. So print, and I want to print some text. You've got to put the text in quotes. And in this case, I'm going to say, I will subscribe to Carl. Whoa, I pressed the wrong key there. I apologize. My apologies. Little fat finger. Subscribe to Carlisle's channel. I'm typing all kinds of funny keys. I need to shrink my fingers. Exclamation mark. Now, notice the beauty here is I can actually type in, so in some other script languages, you may not be able to do this because this actually could be interpreted as a special character and that could cause a problem. Because, like on the shell, you can use this to access your history, for example. So you might get errors with that. But in this case, let's see what happens. Always end your lines in your Perl scripts with the semicolon. That's how you end every line, all right? And we're done. So escape and colon. WQ for write and quit. So we're going to write or save this and then quit to get out of this. Now I can hit the up arrow twice to get my history of where I typed this command in before. And I can hit enter to run it. And look at that. It's amazing. I'm so proud of myself. No, you were proud of yourself because if you were following along like you should have been, then you just wrote your first Perl script. Congratulations. Good job. Excellent. Actually, before you pat yourself on the back, let's clean this up. This is a little sloppy. You see how, you see how this looks? Look, look at this. I will subscribe to Carl's channel, exclamation, Carlisle at, whoa, why, 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 why is this all mixed up with my prompt, man? What's going on? Can't this be on a new line? Yes, it can. So let's go ahead and I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to go back into VI. Look at this. See how it's got my terminal all messed up? Now I hit the up arrow and I got, look at this, look at that, all that space here. It's just, it's a mess. So just hit enter. I for insert mode, real simple. Go to the end, right before the end of the quote there. We're going to hit a backslash N, 
and that is that basically means new line so we've now introduced a new line so let's go ahead and get out of here now hopefully if you guys are following along in VIM you already understand the key so I'm not gonna keep saying them every time so we're gonna get out we already saved and quit now I'm gonna up arrow and go ahead and run it and look at that that is so beautiful that is just that's like super model beautiful I mean it's amazing all right yet again before you pat yourself on the back let's take it to another level step it up a notch let's do something else with this so let's go back into our uh, editor vim and let's see what else we can do with this i want to i want to introduce you to uh being able to accept input from the user from standard in which is when you type in stuff in the command prompt let's type it into standard in so how do we do that what we can do here is we're going to and then another concept we're doing right now also is assigning a variable. So I'm going to assign a variable called channel. All right, so that's my variable. And this is just like you would do it in uh, like, a, like a, a regular shell script where you have dollar sign and variable name. Now, for, if you've never done any programming before, I'm going to explain it to you. That's the beauty of this channel. I'll walk you through the process. I don't assume what you know and what you don't know. I make sure that everyone can understand and follow along. So... If you've never done programming before, a variable basically considered as a placeholder. So when I say dollar sign channel, and then I say equal sign, and I say less than, type this along with me, follow along, stay with me here. Okay, so when I do this, what I'm saying is, and by the way, what am I missing here? I'm missing something. I'm missing something here. What am I missing? Semicolon. I always end every line with a semicolon, right? So what I'm saying here is, I'm saying that... I'm, I'm, I'm using this name, channel, as a variable. That's what a dollar sign in front of it means. So dollar sign and a string or text. That is saying that this is like a, a, a placeholder for something. And I'm going to refer to that thing using this dollar sign channel syntax. Right? So what I'm saying here is I'm saying whatever the user types into standard input. That's what STDIN is, standard input. So that's like... Whenever you type something into the command and you hit enter, so you have your command prompt, you type something, hit enter, you're entering it into standard input. So whenever someone types something in and enters into standard input by hitting enter, I want that to be called or referred to as channel. So rather than having to like rewrite whatever the person says, I'm just going to refer to it as dollar sign channel. So someone types in, uh, hello, my name is blah, 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 and I really love peaches, and they hit enter then that is going to be assigned to dollar sign channel. So I can actually say, I can actually refer to dollar sign channel and get that full thing that the user typed in, all right? And you're going to see exactly how that works. I explained it to you. Now you're going to see exactly how it works. But before we do that, we've got to take a commercial break. We'll be right back in 30 seconds. Don't go anywhere. Stay with me. This is going to be fun, and you're going to understand this, and you're going to give me a thumbs up when I'm done because it's so much fun. All right, we'll be right back 30 seconds. And we're back. Wasn't that long, all right? So here we go. So we're assigning a variable. We have dollar sign channel equals standard input. So we're done with this for now, or are we? Let's find out. So we're going to hit, uh, just get out of here, save it, exit, run it again. All right, so now I have a blinking cursor. It wants me to type something in, anything, whatever you want, and hit enter. But it does nothing. Why does it do nothing? Because I didn't tell it to do anything. All I did is I told it to assign standard input to a variable. And I was just pointing at the screen like you can actually see me pointing at the screen. But anyway, uh, whatever they type in is assigned to this. So actually, uh, let's see, let's just try something out here. So what happens, is, what happens if I do this? So I did this, type in blah, blah, blah. And I just get my, my command prompt. What if I do an echo command and I go dollar channel? What happens? Nothing. That's not how it works. That is not how it works. All right. But watch this. Let's go back into the Perl script that we're working on. And let's go to the end here. And let's go and add something else to this. So now it's nice that you took the standard input and assigned it to a variable, but what do you want me to do with it? Well, how about you print it back? So you, I can prove to me that you have accepted this input into this variable. Prove to me that this actually worked. So show me. Show me. Show me the value of dollar sign channel. Is that going to work just like that? Let's try that out. Let's, let's, let's try it out. I want to know if it's going to work. Try it out. Let's go. 
And that's not what I wanted. Sorry. Uh, fat finger again. All right. So blah, 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 blah. Enter. Look at that. It printed back blah, 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 blah. Just like how I typed it in before. Nice. However, let's try something a little bit different. Let's, let's, let's step it up a notch. What if we wanted to uh, chomp this thing out so it doesn't come out the way it came out? We want to do like how we do with the new line thing. Just take, take a look at this. I'm going to show you something new. There's a command that's called chomp. And we can chomp the variable channel. All right. And now, and actually I did this wrong. I apologize. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to... Let's go print. So we're gonna have to make a correction here. So you're gonna have to correct your script. Follow along, follow along, stay with me. So now, if you're using VIM, what you can do is hit escape, go up to this line up here, hit DD, and there you go. So we chomped it, and then we're gonna print it. So we chomped it first, chomp, like Pac-Man. And then we print it out. All right, so let's, uh, let's get out of here, uh, WQ, and now we are going to run the script and see what happens. No! Execution of my script PL aborted due to compiled errors. Syntax error. My first script PL line 5 near dollar sign channel. What could possibly be wrong with this script? Let's find out. So what do you think is wrong with this script? Why do we get that weird compile error? A couple of options here. You could say, well, a lot of times, like how you did print before, let's follow the syntax. Before we did print and we put this in quotes, right? Hmm. So a logical assumption is potentially, you know, if it worked before in that format, let's, let's follow the same format. Because remember, dollar sign channel is just basically referring to the variable dollar sign channel, which the value of that is basically going to be standard input, whatever the user types in, right? So just consider this to be the same thing like this, where it's just a bunch of text, right? All right, so let's see if that works. Okay, so we're still getting the error. So that tells you that that is not the problem. Now, let me see if some of you guys have been paying attention to the tutorial, because you should see a problem. I'm going to kind of help you and guide you towards the error. But we know that wasn't the error, so let's just, I just reverted it back. So what is wrong with this? Now... We know it's not up here, most likely, because we already ran this without errors. We ran this without errors. And this we did not run, and this we did not run. So we know most likely it's between these two lines, right? So it's between line 4 and line 5. Now, one thing to note, and I think I want to point this out to help you guys out. Now, very, pay attention to these error messages. You're saying syntax. So we're breaking syntax somehow. Right, so the rules of how you're supposed to type this stuff in, the format of it, right? And it's referencing line five, and it's saying near dollar sign channel, dollar sign channel print. All right, so using that as a guide, so line five is this line, and it's saying that there's an error around there somewhere. So let's start from the first new line, and perhaps focus on the you know, where this line ends and where the next line begins. What's wrong here? What, what, what did we talk about before that we didn't do here? What's missing? What could be missing? I'm going to go into insert mode. Most of you guys have probably got it by now. Who knows what's missing? Semicolon. Remember that. Every line ends with a semicolon, right? So we're going to go ahead and run it like this. Now the next line you'll say, but well, wait a minute, the last line you didn't have a semicolon. All right. Pretty sharp. Well, let's see what happens if I try to run it as is. What do you know? It actually works. So the reason why it, it works like that is going to be because this is actually the final line. You see, when I didn't have the semicolon here, which, by the way, on the command line, the semicolon is how you separate commands. You can join a bunch of commands together. You know, one command, semicolon, next command, semicolon, next command, and such. Uh, and so forth. Um, but this is the last line, so there's no reason to really have that, but just, you know, to be proper, let's do that. So now everything's fine here, and um, I think we're going to end this episode of writing your first Perl script. Congratulations on successfully writing your first Perl script. And now 
I'm going to quiz you to make sure that you really pick this stuff up. So go ahead and click on this link right now so I can quiz you.